Welcome to Real Flicks Reviews, we're like a book club for people who hate reading. This month it's Stanley Kubrick only and we're doing the movie Clockwork Orange, made in 1971. And we bring you movie news at the end of the program. This week we have Jonathan Charney, James Stevens, and the Marilyn Monroe lookalike in the lower left hand corner is Ryan Preston. Like we said in the opening, this week is Clockwork Orange, and who has the description? For I'll be taking this one over. <clears throat> so, Clockwork Orange, 1971, Stanley Kubrick, Malcolm McDowell, blah, blah, blah. And future Britain, charismatic de delinquent <clears throat> Alex the Large is jailed and volunteers for an experimental aversion therapy developed by the government in an effort to solve society's crime problem. I but not all. I think we planned. I think we found the winner for so far the best description in IMDb. <laughs> Although it really only starts describing it about halfway into the movie. I know. But I that's know. still better than the last one. It was eight words last time. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So now we decided that since I've seen this movie before, Ryan's <laughs> seen this mo movie before, and John is the odd man out. Yep. He gets to go first. Well, I had a question. He drew the short straw. The really short, 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 short straw. It's like the short bus. Uh-huh. But unfriendlier. A, a question, though, is I wanted to ask, one of the things I, I wanted to say is, should how should we look at this? Because oh, you always hear about that, and you always hear about the people who say, either this movie needs to be looked at deeper, or it's just on the surface. I don't care. Now, I'm going to go into the deeper levels of this movie, and I'm going to take it also on just the surface level. But I don't care what you want to do. I mean, if you want to just look at this movie as a surface, you know, face value, you can go right ahead. Because well, well, what I but did is... Because uh, that's what most people do. Well, yeah. I kind of looked at it, since I've never seen it before, I just kind of did it on the surface of things okay. and things I noticed. That's perfectly fine. Go but I was, I was wondering about that. So, you know, as you guys go up, I was curious about that because you, you always hear how oh this movie is amazing it's uh, it's a uh, take on society it's this it's that I mean this is what you hear about it okay um, we'll go right ahead see the first thing I, I, I said was the what this movie really has going for it is the writing and kind of the, the, the writing you know with the slang and the delivery of Malcolm McDowell and him playing the character and the narrator at the same time I think that's the one really standout thing about this movie besides the, the over-the-topness of it is how good the writing really is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I thought it was really well done, especially, like you said, how he's the silly narrator, my brothers. Yeah. <laughs> you know, his, so his pretty his, well done. His delivery of, uh, oh, my brother. Yeah. You know, just I, I love the way he delivers these lines. And I'm surprised this movie's not quoted more because it's, it's, there's a really good mix of English, Slavic, and miscellaneous terms. Well, see, matter of fact, that's half the reason I wanted you to see this, is just to see if you would notice all of the references in pop culture that have been made sort of since that movie. Yeah, they're, they're, but they're very... You know, it's one of the, those movies that I think people are somewhat afraid to quote. <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, I, I, I mean... Truthfully. I don't know about afraid, but it's it's a, it's a, a niche kind of a thing. Like, it could be, yeah. you know, for... Some people who watch it just on the surface, they look at it. I mean, that's a twisted, twisted movie. Yeah. You I'm know, a, but, it, you know, obviously it has the, the not really hidden meanings, but, you know, so, so, uh, um, Socio, uh, sociological. Yes. Yeah. Uh, um, I'm, I'm, meanings behind it and, and even some right there on the surface. But right, Let's keep him going before we get into our. Th okay, go ahead. I am going to start calling all my friends the droogs, though. <laughs> all my droogs? Um, Why well, was that Scottish? It's I don't know. It was a really poor take on it. It's a it's a it's a, it's a, it's a Russian Rottish, Scottish. Rottish? Yeah, that's right. Hey, okay, <laughs> this is for all you people who bitched about it. <laughs> yeah. Um, and the other thing is with this movie being forty two years old, it does show its age, but not as bad as its contemporaries and some and yeah. some state and some things. Well, and it, it does. Uh, it takes place sort of in future Britain, also. Well, so, I mean, it, it, but it's funny, though, the way people look at the future in the 60s, you know what I mean? Well, yeah, well, future movies have a tendency to the ones that show its age the most. Right. Like, certain things in the movie Gattaca really show it to be a, a, a period of time in the 90s. Yeah. Just like this one is, you know, in the 70s. Right, how the, uh, the apparently technology is advanced, you know what I mean, but uh, tapes uh, are still existing. Exactly. The mini tapes. They've gotten smaller, but it's still real-to-real -real tape. 
Yeah. Still impressive. Okay. Um, <clears throat> let's see. So aside from the writing and yeah. uh I have this note and I'm I'm not really Oh Just say it. Oh well, you don't understand a, your notes? I don't know what I said, but said every time I see the scene <laughs> where they oh I see with every time they see that they they pop open the, his eyes and they, they use those wires to keep it open. Yeah, it just looks like it hurts. Well, and even in that scene, it looks like he's in pain. Well, it does. It even says in the trivia that he actually got his cornea scratched in that and was blinded for a short time. Yeah, and the other one is what I said at the beginning was you know with all the themes in the movie, can you overanalyze it? Is there a deeper meaning behind besides the sex and violence? You know stuff like that. I think you could overanalyze this movie. Well, because this is one of those movies that I think you could overdo it just like Gattaca. Yeah. I think you can spend so much time on the minutia, but you lose the, the overall point of the movie. Yeah. I liked it, though. Um, not something I would go out of my way to see, but the combination between kind of the wacky sets and the semi androgynous make up droogs in the beginning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Semi. Yeah, you mean the gay bikers who are raping the young girl? Well, Malcolm McDowell only had like that eyelash on one side. I mean, well, I thought that was <clears> kind of <throat> actually, you know, if you think about it, it was kind of funny the way that he did that. I mean, he's like trying to show his soft, gentler side. Yeah, by raping a woman halfway through the movie. I forgot how much rape was in that movie, by the way. Uh, I mean, the, damn. The other thing that surprised me is the amount of phallic. F you know, phallics in this oh, movie. Yeah. All, oh, the, all yeah. the art, any any painting, any art installation kind of thing was was extremely sexual. Yeah, like overtly. I mean, it was yeah. just like yeah, boom, crazy overtly. Like there's a giant dick sitting on the desk, <laughs> right? Like, Connected okay. to an ass, <laughs> yeah. and that's it. <laughs> yeah. uh, no wonder that woman was stretching. Okay, Ryan, <laughs> do you want to go first or me? Or after um, this one? I'll, I'll, I got a couple things to say. Okay, um, I got quite a bit. Sure. So I, I'll, I'll let you wrap this up. Um, I loved the the he, there was a really minimal use of the score uh, itself, but most of the music was just classical and yeah. synth. A lot of uh, synth attached well, see, to that. Well, that's the thing is the synth that was the score part. You know, um, the that was actually I think written for the movie, but um, but most of the of the. Most of the time, it was literally just classical music. You know, uh, Beethoven, Vin Vincent or Ludwig Van. Ludwig yeah. Van. Ludwig Van. Um, Van. But Listen up. He that music juxta uh, juxtaposed with all of the stuff going on in the movie was... <laughs> it was bizarre. Like, it, it's, you could definitely tell Kubrick's sort of twisted sense of humor. Yeah. Because um, a lot of it was, was like, dark comedy style. Um, but at the same time, telling this really, really messed up story... Um, I don't know. I mean, it, it, it. well, you can watch. You can watch how he changes. If you go from the killing to Clockwork Orange, you can see certain camera things are similar, but the the, the way he does it is, is a, it's a total difference. Well, and certain sensibilities are are, are still the same. Is yeah. it's in the way he likes to tell a story, you know, and uh, and really sort of challenge the the viewers kind of uh, limits, I guess, as far as you know, like what's in in good taste in movies. Yeah. True, but uh, but yeah, I love I love the music, the the writing, like you said, John, um, was, I mean, borderline poetic, you know what I mean, like like Shakespearean poetic kind of thing, but a sort per of a perverted colloquial uh, British, you know, um, <clears throat> but it was one of the standout things aside from the aside from the music, um, that I you know like that I really ended up enjoying a lot. Yeah, I think this movie was. Uh there was a lot of things that you could enjoy if you got over a lot of the the grotesque violence sexual things because well, yeah cuz that's that's the part that's really in your face but i think I'm, i think i'm going to get to that uh, Brian, did you have anything else um not necessarily this time okay huh. um now i'm going to jump on this one and <clears throat> i think this movie shows how talented and amazing Kubrick is. Um, he's the writer, the director. He did even the promoting of this movie. He did most of this by himself. I mean, this is based off of a novel, but most of this, the everything was mostly done by Kubrick. 
Yeah, you could and, definitely tell the vision was was all Kubrick. And one of the things, hold on, one of the things I think is underplayed is the fact that, as John was saying, there is some socio social sociological things that are in this movie that a lot of people, if you just take this at face value, you're not going to get. And you're not going to understand why there's so much violence. You're not going to understand why there's so much sex. You're not even going to understand why you feel so unsatisfied at the end of the movie. Because you want to see <coughs> Alex Delard, Delard get punished. And you don't see that. You see him mm. basically get away scot-free. And That's revert a, back to right where he was. Right again. where he was. He he basically says, I'm cured in saying that, haha, I'm back to right where I was. Right, yeah, you, your you're crazy brainwashing plan didn't and work. I think the, the uh, Kubrick pushing the limits of film at this time. The movie, This movie, on its original release, was actually rated X. There's only that two surprise me. There's only two movies that are like that, and one of them was uh, Midnight Cowboy. Right. But not only was this, was this movie, you know, on its release, rated X, but it was also uh, nominated for Academy Awards. Same as Midnight Cowboy. Yes. And, <clears throat> you know, I think the lines that are that are in this are, are really well done. I, I got to give it big credit to Malcolm for being able to, to deliver these. So the writing in that is just amazing. Yeah, I'm just kind of showing this thing. I mean... One of the first quotes on IMDb. Apipologies, I had something of a pain in the gulliver, so I had to sleep. I was not awakened when I gave orders for awakening. It's like, how did he really remember how to deliver that damn line? That was, that was my first thought, is, is like how long it would actually take you to remember some of this nonsensical slang. So, I mean, him... Kubrick being the director and getting Malcolm, I mean, not to underplay his acting ability, but Kubrick to sit there and go into that much detail well, I, I and actually, how he wanted to portray this movie. Another thing is that the spit scene, I mean, when oh, he gets spit in the face, yuck. the actual actor who was supposed to deliver the spit ran out of saliva, so he had a backup spitter to get that perfect spit shot. Oh, what I would give to be spat at in the face. I know. Well, really? <laughs> well, next time... It's next, a Monty Python reference. Yeah. Next time you come up here, I'll volunteer. So you you had something. I'm not, not even close to being done. Well, it, but <laughs> I'm not. Well, There's my, my question here. was actually about the storytelling. Because I'm wondering... Because this doesn't have a traditional story. I no, mean, the, the, the way it's it told. Not. There's really no bad guy equal becomes a good guy at the end. You like modern storytelling. There's always redemption at the end of the movie. This is kind of... A guy who starts out an asshole, ends an asshole, and was forced like he couldn't be an asshole. So the whole movie is is not it's not traditional storytelling. No, what, what the point it is this more movie, of an antihero. Yeah, this well, is I don't an even antihero think movie. And I don't I, even think it's that. I actually noticed that there were some people that were saying that they felt bad for Alex at the end. And that's the problem. That's the thing that Kubrick was actually trying to t trying to tell you. Is that if you look at society and the way that we're heading and we're pretty much already there nowadays, is that the the aggressors are becoming the victims, and the victims are becoming the aggressors at the end. And that's basically what this movie is saying. You're seeing these people, th this, uh, you know, uh, Andy, Alex, sorry, Andy, Alex, going around and raping uh, robbing, killing, killing, violating, doing all these horrible things. And then in the middle, you see where the justice starts to kind of come into play. But then it takes a turn and says, we can redeem this man. Uh, uh, and then it turns out and goes backwards again. Where I noticed the something victims Sorry. become the aggressors. I think what happens is, is, is that. But I think what happens is. Andy, uh, the Alex, Alex doesn't change, but society does. If you watch it, a society is one way when he goes to jail, and it's more like he was at the end. It's more violent. It's more, uh, you know, there's more vitriol. More, it's more in your face. Yeah. It seems society is more violent. They caught up to him. Well, no, no, no. What it was is that he had changed society mm -hmm. to make them frustrated that they're not getting the justice that they deserve and so they try to exact that justice that they feel they deserve 
on somebody who's quote unquote fixed, cured, whatever, mm-hmm. when they're really not. And it turns out that he actually is able to come over the get over the therapy and revert back to his old form. But he got benefits. He got a, a nice job, a nice salary, all of his medical bills paid for. Everything was taken care of for him. And he's like, well, whatever. I'm already I'm back to where I was. Yeah, he's sitting yeah. back in yeah. front of those giant So that's speakers. kind of what it's saying is that, you know, if we if we as a society kind of think that we can change criminal behavior, control it, we really can't. That's what I've always taken away from this book. And it's a warning to society to stay away from that and to continue with the, the tried and true methods. So do you, the question is, was it done on purpose? I think it was done on purpose. I think this whole movie was done as that. And we look at it and we're, we're – and the point of what I always take away from the sex and the violence is that it's so in your face – so that you take it seriously. And at that end of the movie, I believe that you are supposed to be left unhappy, unfulfilled. Because that's the point of it. What about right. you, Ryan? There's there's many, many scenes in there that just give you sort of that visceral reaction. You know yeah. what I mean? Of like, the hell, man. Like, Really? Like, why are you taking that big phallic symbol and shoving it into that poor woman's face? Or the the, the scene where they rape the chick in the red and the, the yeah. home marked home. Right. Yeah, 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 exactly. And then, um, you Going know, even, back uh, to the house. you know, but, I, but it, in as much as, like you said, like, like, I think Alex sort of started changing society, like you said, in, in and of himself, just because all of the, the things that he's done gave people the reaction to to react to him that way like basically his bad deeds gave everybody else justification to do bad shit to him yeah Cause, cause, exactly because he that, liked a little too much of the ultra violence yeah exactly right. and then you know like like in it, when the when the the guy who ended up being crippled you know um wants to like torture him so he can kill himself you know like that i mean alex basically did that to him mm-hmm. yeah you know, like like by you know raping his wife, raping his wife in front of him and beating him to and the point beating of being, him to you know to you know cripple. Yeah, the the thing I thought was interesting was when his fellow droogs turned on him when they became well, cops. That well, was they, the one I thought was yeah, interesting. yeah, that was an interesting one, and that's actually I thought that was a pretty well good point that he made there. Is even the the underlings can get into a position of power. Mm-hmm. And yeah. can take well, their ultra violence guys, into uh, that. Seem like they would be cops anyway, you know, yeah. just like every douchebag you went to high school with. Yeah, that's kind of the other thing that I made think. Um, another thing that I thought was kind of interesting was the fact that his probation officer. Now I didn't know this, but I found this in the trivia that he is actually supposed to be 15 in this movie, <coughs> and when he gets out and he's in the hospital bed at the end of the movie, he's supposed to be 17. So he's only supposed to be a 15 year old kid, and his probation officer sneaks into his house. And yeah. cuddles him in his undies mm-hmm. on the bed, and then ball punches him. Mm-hmm. Well, more I mean, what like kind of probation back. officer is that? A touchy feely uh, one. Yeah. Yes. A petter ass. Uh, yeah. There you go. I thought that was a very creepy thing. I didn't know what exactly Cooper was trying to. Say well, there it's except- a real special human being to be a uh, juvenile probation officer. Well, yes, it I, does. But if but if you yes. noticed, but if you notice in what the the probation officer said, that the probation officer gets in trouble for everybody he doesn't actually yes. help, and he gave up on him already. Yeah. So I think what it was is the probation officer just trying to keep him in line by yeah. making uh, Alex uncomfortable by showing up at his house, drinking the the water from his mom's like. Oh, oh that was a mistake. And in, in uh. <laughs> yeah, that was not on purpose, John. <laughs> Sure, but you know, it's. I think it was just all trying to uh, keep uh, keep the probation officer in Alex's mind. But yeah, and, and you know, honestly, I gotta I gotta admit, when I first saw this movie, it was about probably around ten years ago. The first time I saw this movie, I remember coming out of this movie, and I'm like, you know, finishing this movie, and I'm like, man, that was actually a really disturbing movie. Mm-hmm. And like I said, I was left wanting. I'm like, there was no fulfillment in that movie. There's nothing really there. And I remember I mentioned it to my dad, and he goes, "That's a great movie." Yeah. And I'm like, really? Bleak. Well, what did I miss here? <laughs> what did I miss here? And so I sat there and I thought about it for a little while, and it probably took me all of a little bit to realize, oh, that's actually kind of really disturbing. That a 
person as corrupt and strange and odd and and uh, you know just criminal aspect can get away with things like that. Mm -hmm. And then if we yeah, think well, about it's, it's it, sociopathic. That, that's yeah. already happening in our society. I mean, we're taking care of our criminals, felons, violent criminals, better than we are our homeless people. You know what we need is a good old fashioned prison colony. <laughs> what they like? They got in a. Um, well, you know, like Australia, North or, America, or the U.S., South America. Like they have in well, South we, America. We can find ourselves that you know. Don't we still own the Virgin Islands? Well, we yeah. have we have we have New York and Los Angeles. What else do you need? Escape Actually, if we send York, all we the criminals out, Manhattan. <laughs> if we send all the criminals out there, we can't really call them the Virgin Islands anymore. Oh, oh, wow. <laughs> on that note, ladies and gentlemen, prison <laughs> rape joke. <laughs> Ooh, on, on on that note, Ryan, what do you give this movie? Ooh. Holy shit! Oh. <laughs> That's a rough transition. <laughs> yeah, from prison I'm rape gonna, jokes. Oh, to, uh, what do I give? Is that movie? what he said? Oh, um. don't make me mute you. <laughs> <laughs> so, Ryan, what did you give this movie? Um. Oh. I, you know what? I've been thinking about this all damn morning. Um, I have to go with a four for a couple of reasons. One, like you said, the writing was 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 amazing. Um, the dialogue was, like I said, I mean, poetic. Like it was, but juxtaposed with the well, most well, terrible well, things well, you well. can imagine. You know what I mean? It's like if Shakespeare had the most twisted sense of humor in the world. You mean he doesn't? Well, he kind of does. Not. Maybe a, a more modern cousin. twisted sense of humor, I should say. Sister cousin. Why? Again, more modern twisted sense of humor. <laughs> but the, 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 the music and everything was, was amazing. The story with the unconventional, you know, way to, 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 not even a way to tell a story, but to tell a completely different story than, than even is, is really shown now. I mean, that's the thing is, that's, that's why I gave this four is because even now, you can't find anything that unique. Yeah. You know, and and although I couldn't recommend this to everybody, I would recommend it to, to most people. Um, the people that I wouldn't uh, tell this tell uh, tell to watch this movie was people who just have a really, you know, weak sensibilities who would yeah. just look at it as face value, like, "Well, the hell did you make me watch all this rape movie?" So James, like, no, you got to look past the rape. I'm sorry. <laughs> James, but uh, yeah, this movie for pretty much all the same reasons that Ryan said. Even the fact that he pointed out that you can't really just tell somebody to go watch this movie. It's one of those that you have to be discerning in who you tell to watch this movie. It's straight out uh, a four. Um, almost on the verge of a five, but wow. I mean the fact that I mean there's so based on the the storytelling and the writing, like he said. Yeah. Because it's a totally unconventional story. It's one of those original stories that cannot be redone. I think if anybody tried to re remake this movie, they would fail. Oh, can you imagine that movie having a, a theatrical release now? Oh, I know. Like, that would straight out be only in porno theaters it where you don't be, want to sit on the seat. It would be independently released. It would be in maybe one or two indie theaters around the country. Yeah. And and that's it. It would it would have a life on DVD. It would yeah. never have a it's, major release. I don't know how the hell it wouldn't be got released back in the day. Not to mention got released, but had such a cultural impact. It was the seventies in the sixties and the seventies. In as much as people were dressing like like the Drews, you know what I mean? Yeah, but did you see? But have you seen a lot of the movies that came out of the seventies, the sexploitation movies that were oh, sure. yeah, yeah, yeah. released? So yep. this just snuck in with those. I guess so. Um, but, yeah, I give this movie a straight out four. I think it's one of these movies that really defines Kubrick. Oh, and yeah. I think he is one of the, the most underappreciated directors of, you know, he died in 99, so I can't say of our time, but of all time, one of the most underappreciated directors. Right so. next to Scorsese for you? Uh, no, like, Scorsese's like, you know, <laughs> I, 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 I will bite my tongue. I'll have to be honest. I give this movie a three. Um, I, it's it's worth seeing. I, I'm not a giant fan of it, but it's definitely if you've never seen it before, it's definitely a movie to see. Um, if you can get if you can bypass what it's actually about, you're gonna like it. If if you're really sensitive to this type of movie, wait, wait, wait. if you bypass what well, by, bypass because some people can't handle the violence and the overt 
the way this movie is. Well, that's not what the movie's about. Because it's really in your face. If you don't like that, you're not going to like the movie. But if you, if could, you don't like rape, yeah. you're not going to like this movie, folks. Yeah, 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 yeah. But you know what I mean. It's just, it's this movie has kind of a method to its wow. madness. And this is not a movie that everybody's going to be able to see and enjoy. Yeah, you know, I, I see what you're saying. You know, I, I liked the movie. I would, don't know if I would have given it a four. Um, but it's definitely worth seeing. See, it's one of those movies that you just can't watch once and think it's a four. It's one of those that you really need to take your time to let the movie sink in after. Because, I mean, well, it's it one, one of those, those that's going to that shock stick with you. Yeah, it will. Oh, yeah, it, it does. It's it like I remember away. the first time I saw this movie and the feeling that I came away with. That's how impacting, how, how much of a movie impact this movie can have on somebody. I mean, usually I don't get bothered by a lot of those things, but that move, this movie specifically, had so much in it that it took me a while to get, yeah. to get it. So, so on movie news, <clears throat> next year, there's a movie coming out named Gohira Suri D. Do you guys know what that is? No clue. Godzilla. I was going to say Gojira. Oh. Uh-huh. Oh, it's the new Godzilla movie. The is new Matthew Godzilla. Broderick in it? No. <laughs> not that I've seen yet. The new Godzilla movie is coming out, and I actually am curious to see this one. I like Godzilla. so yeah. I, You know, I like some of the Godzillas, but, you know, I could never get past the rubber costume. Well, what about I 2000? could never get past uh, the one with John Reno. Yeah. Oh, that was the that Godzilla was 2000 one yeah. with Matthew Broderick. Horrible. Well, I mean, Bro- just like, I guess it's Godzilla. Godzilla. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Um, but, you know, I think this one is very exciting. I mean, I I really want to see how Hannibal plays, you know, Godzilla. Is, Ma- is uh, Mothra going to be in it? <laughs> oh, he, what? He didn't, get at the, he didn't get the Hannibal. No, what? I didn't. What are you talking about? A-Team. What? God. <laughs> I, do it's I a really reference. have to explain this to you? It's a reference and a reference. It's a reference and a reference to the A-Team. Okay, I got Hannibal the Hannibal playing all the monsters. Okay, Jesus Christ. <laughs> when the hell was the last time you saw the A-Team? Oh, he's come on. He, a couple years ago, maybe? Come on, he was born in, like, anyway. 98. Come on. So, um... <laughs> <laughs> it pretty much keeps with the normal uh, Godzilla theme, but I'm actually interested to see this because I, I, the director of this one is Gareth Edwards. Now, you probably guys probably don't know anything about this guy yet. Uh, he's only got, what, uh, let's see, four movies to his credit. Um, but one of the movies is called Monsters. It came out in uh, 2010. Oh, I liked that movie. Thank you. I was hoping monsters? somebody else had seen it besides me. Holy shit, that movie fucking ruled, dude. I know. With just monsters? That's the name of it. it was monsters. Yeah, yeah. It was a, it was like really low budget. Like like um, it but, was it's like two kids or something. It was, yeah. It was pretty much the entire movie. Yeah. This is the plot line of this movie is six years after Earth has suffered an alien invasion. A cynical journalist agrees to escort a shaken American tourist through an infected zone in Mexico. To the safety of the U.S. board. And what they did was, like Ryan said, this is such a low-budget movie. Totally indie film. Yeah. But the the way they portrayed the monsters was amazing. Wasn't it? It was so good. It was really good. And they Mm -hmm. actually showed them a couple times. And it wasn't like you were disappointed. No, they they used the money that they had in the right places. Yeah. Well, here's here's a question on the Godzilla thing. Have they to- have they said anything about the design of it? Is it going to be no. close to the traditional, or is it going to be the semi more realistic? I, I haven't the seen 2000? anything on it, I don't know, uh, but I have faith in that guy. Yeah, me too. That's what really made me excited. And then uh, they actually got a somewhat of an A list actor. They say, oh, it's an A list actor on on uh, Godzilla, uh, Juliette Binoche. You know, you English? Know, English patient, uh, Dan in real life, chocolate. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, well, that who, that girl. What was the guy? The Juliet Binoche or you, Gareth? Uh, yeah, it's uh, Brian Cranston, uh, Aaron, uh, Aaron Taylor Johnson, Elizabeth Olsen. Brian Cranston's in it. Juliet yeah. Binoche. Yeah, I love Brian Cranston. So you know, th- there there's some really 
well, well-known people doing it, except for the director who, I mean, he really does not have a lot, but what he has is actually quality. No, but this is cool, because if he's like you said he is, and he has a three or four pictures, that means he's not, he doesn't have a particular style he's going to stick to, like some directors who have been doing movies over and over again. I don't know, if he sticks to the way that he put out monsters, there is so much hope for this. Yeah, I mean, because that... That was a underrated movie. I think what's the IMDb rating on that? It's a horrible rate, six point four. Not bad, but I, last time I looked at it, it was in the fives. It was like a five point two or something, which I'm like, really? But the story sounded so cool that I actually watched it. And I'm like, dude, that was underrated. But it'll probably end up being one of those movies. If this movie is a real big hit, it'll be one of his. You know, it'll be a cult favorite. But I mean, I was always a movie. Godzilla fan as a kid. Oh, I totally. really liked it. I always thought the fact that, I mean, I loved, like, pretty much like, I just go on to destroy everything I see, which was always cool. So Godzilla or Mechagodzilla or Mechagodzilla? Godzilla, not Mechagodzilla. Yeah. Mechagodzilla was lame. That's like a Power Ranger. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a Megazord, that's it. It's like a Power Ranger enemy. <laughs> Wow. So, but actually, if you could check out, and I and I actually encourage people watching this show right now to go check out Monsters. It was released in 2010. I'd never even and heard of it. Check it out, and then then comment on whether or not you're excited to see this Godzilla thing come out because the way he did it was just so cool. And that's the only reason why I'm even bringing this up as movie news is because of this director. Yeah, this if it was something else, it would be a joke, and I'd be making fun of it. Yeah, this sounds <laughs> interesting. Um, I've never seen Monsters. When did you watch Monsters, right? Yeah. Oh, shoot. I think s- pretty soon after it came out, maybe uh, maybe early 2011. Okay. Yeah, I'm looking I actually forward watched to it, uh, it last year, middle, like, summertime of last year or something. Okay. I'm so definitely I just can't, it was on uh, Netflix. You also seen that, too. Ne- yeah, I was, like, surprised that you'd seen it because I was going to pretty much tell you two to go watch it. I'm going to go see it yeah. this week when I have a chance. I think oh, it might totally still be on it. Netflix. Uh, hopefully. If not, it says it's here. It's on uh, Amazon. Oh, okay. Cool. So, Ryan, next week is your pick. I think I know what he's going to pick. Yes. So what are you going to pick? <laughs> 1964, Dr. Strangelove, <laughs> or How I Learned to Stop yeah. Worrying and Love the Bomb. Starring Peter Sellers, George C. Scott, directed by Stanley Kubrick, written by Stanley Kubrick. Peter Sellers? Why do I reckon that name sounds so familiar? You have no are you idea. Sh- are you- I know the name, I just can't <laughs> place it at the moment. Come on, dude. Really? Pink Panther. Okay. I'm sorry, I, just, I haven't had enough caffeine today. Apparently not. <laughs> Wow. It's cool. I was drawing a blank on half my uh, my thoughts on, on uh, Clockwork. I can so. tell. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know who he is now after looking at it. Right, yeah. The He's, he's Inspector Clouseau. Yeah. Yep. Um, he plays three characters in Strange Love. Um, all I can say is, is, is you're welcome for making you watch this movie. You know what? I like this movie. I'm thinking we should all pick a Pink Panther with Peter Sellers. <laughs> <laughs> I have him. <laughs> have them movies all. are totally underrated. Totally I know. up. I still can't believe that they allowed. Oh, jeez, the 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 disgrace of the remakes. Oh yeah, well yeah yeah. You know, so, I'm not even gonna mention his name. Who did it? So, ladies I'm, and look, gentlemen, I, I, dead I to me. love I love Steve Martin. I love Steve Martin. I do too, but he's Except dead to me after those. So, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> I gave the movie. I gave the. A Clockwork Orange a three. Ryan gave it a four. James gave it a four. Next week it's Doctor Strange Love. We'll see. Or how you I next learned to week. stop worrying and love the bomb. Thank you. Bye. It's not just Doctor Strange Love. Close enough. No, it's not. It's Doctor <laughs> Strange Love or Colon How I Learned to Stop Worrying and Love the Bomb. Exactly. Grammar Nazi. No, it's not Grammar Nazi. It's Title Nazi. It's just Title Nazi. This episode of Old Guy Tech TV is brought to you by Ward's Automotive, specializing in Banks Power and Pack Brake. Servicing your car or truck and specializing in diesel engines. Over 30 years of service located in Diamond Springs, California. Give them a call at 530-626-5588.